What up, though, y'all? It's your boy, Bill Man. So, y'all know I had ended up relapsing on the Black and Miles. And, you know, I decided to go back being not smoking them. And, boy, today's day one. Damn, it's 6.40 p.m. Shit, by now, but I've been unsmoked a few of them. I ain't smoked not one, bro. I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to stay down with it. And, uh, you know, that first day, man, I just been irritated all day. I've been frustrated because usually I've been unsmoked the black, calm myself down. But, you know, I'm bucking on it. I'm trying to, you know, be better with my health. So, it is what it is, man. This day one is going to get greater later. One day, you know, I'm working a job and in intake. I got the intake job working with the lady, the one lady that I told y'all when I came in, they was trying to tell me to go to one dorm, but I didn't go for whatever reason. I'm working this job now. I just fast forward a little bit. I'm working this job now. So they got intake. Now I'm super busy this day, bro. You got the intake people that came in. You got them. All right. I'm explaining to y'all what it looked like from where I'm at. Okay, you got this back little room area. It's a shower to your right with a curtain right here. And then to the left is a toilet with a curtain right here. That's all back here. Directly in front of it is a room right here to the left where the new intake sitting at. Then to the right is a desk where the people, you know, sit behind the desk and do your inventory. Then straight is the officer's office that work in there. To the right is a holding area where the inmates going out sit at, waiting on the bus to come get them. And then to the left is a door that takes you out onto the walk. And then straight is a door that takes you into medical. So I'm sitting back here by with a shower at on all these mats. So one of the dudes that just came in, he like, he keep trying to get my attention. But I just took a little slight break and sat down for a couple minutes. Because bro, on days like this, you busy as hell. That lady got you out there in the hot, Cause out there on the outside where they sit at, it's a um, it's like a gate with locks on it. She unlock it. That's where everybody property go at. So man, you in there? The people who returning, you gotta go search through every single name, pull their property. Then the new people, you gotta go to the other one, get them all brand new stuff. So you busy all day, bro. You know what I'm saying? On transfer day, the intake orderly is gonna be busy all day. So. I get over there to the um to the back. I finally sit down. Dude jump up. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, I'm trying to act like I don't see his ass for a minute. Then when, a, when the officer walk away, ain't nobody around here. You know what I'm saying? Like, here, hit the glass or whatever. So I finally look up. He like, bro, hey, bro. Come on, let me. I'll let me. Doing all kind of stuff. I'm like, man, I don't know what the hell you talking about. So I eventually walk over there when I know it was cool to walk. So I put my ear up to the door. I'm like, what's up, bro? He said, hey, bro, look, I need your help. Hurry up, hurry up, bro. I need your help before they take the, them, them dudes out over there on that right side. So I said, what's up? He said, bro, I got that pack of Chris Brown CDs. I'm trying to get my little brother over there. My little brother over there, the one with the little box fade, the kid and fro haircut. He said, man, I need to get this to him real quick before he transfer and go wherever he need to go. So I'm like, bro, it's too hot to do that, bro. You got my detail officer right here in her office. Then you got another officer over there with them. How the hell I'm going to get this from you? Walk it straight over to him. Give it to him without either one of them seeing this. They're like, bro, you just got to know how to finesse it, shout it. You just got to know how to finesse it. Don't do no country shit. So I'm like, bro, it's just too much going on. So while I'm talking to him, I hear the cart rolling and I hear that door opening. So I turn. I walk off. I go back over here, back to where the mat is at. I sit down. I pull the curtain up a little bit just so dude can't even keep looking at me. You know what I'm saying? It's Deputy Warren Gallant. I hear his voice. So he come in, he say, hey, Miss T. He's speaking to the lady that's working in there. So she like, hey, Gallant. Hey, Gallant. What you got going on? Some people call him Gallant. Some people call him Gallant. But I know him as Gallant. But this lady used to always say Gallant. She was like, hey, Galette, what you got going on? He said, nothing. Them damn boys down there in B-Bid and think they got all the damn sense. She said, what, Galette? What they did? Keep in mind, for the people who might be new here, keep in mind, <laughs> this deputy warden of security ain't no damn staff member. 
he's an inmate. He's an inmate. He locked up too. He stuck like Chuck. This man just think he the damn law enforcement somehow. So he told the lady, he said, them boys down there in damn B building think they got all the sense, Miss T. So I come from around the thing. So I hear her saying, why, what the hell they did? What the hell they did? Man, I come from around the thing, bro. His whole posture, he just looked like the police. The man standing there with his left arm on the top of the car, his right arm, he got that long droopy lip sipping a cup of coffee while he talking to the lady. She's sitting down looking like, why, what them boys did? What them boys? So he said, I was walking up there to that bed and about to get them boys, some of them them sick call forms that everybody be asking for and some medical requests and some counselor request forms. And when I get up there to that be bed and that damn girl, that little young girl, yeah, Miss Adams, yeah, the girl ain't but 19, 20 years old. She's sitting there in that booth and all these inmates turn to the side looking at the booth. And then when I walk up, they... Just acting like they doing, just chilling. I know them boys down there, Jack, and guess what I did, Miss T? Miss T said, what you did, Galat? He said, I went straight to Deputy Warden and Security Office, and I told him that that little young girl, Miss Adams, that new girl down there, she been letting them boys jack off on her, and that he need to check her out. He said, he got her down there in the office right now. And she said, that's crazy, that girl letting them boys do that. And I'm just sitting back thinking, like, bro, what is wrong with that man, bro? You know what I'm saying? So he look up at me when I can't walk around that way. He told me, what's going on, Bill? I was like, ain't, ain't nothing. I'm all right. I'm all right. I go in my little closet area. He come this way, walking back there, really think he got all the sense. He's really trying to go to where I just left because he want to catch me slipping so bad. He trying to lay on seeing anything back there. When when Deputy Warden Gallant turns and goes and walk back to with the area I just left, as I'm coming out the closet, the dude who just came that just tried to get me to do something, I see Dumbo hitting the glass. So Deputy Warden Gallant kept walking at first. He was like, hey, man, don't hit no damn glass for me. I'm not doing none of that shit. I don't break no rules. I don't break no rules. I guess dude not paying attention to what he's saying. I purposely come around to where he can see me in the distance and I go to doing like this. I'm basically telling him, hey, 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 don't do that. Do not do that. Don't don't ask that man to pass nothing for you. He gonna have your ass bamped out. Clearly he's not paying attention to me. He do it again. Deputy Warren Gallant turned around after he looked back there where I was at. He walked up here. He said, what, man? And then he said, huh? And he put his ear to the door. And then that man started smiling. I said, oh, he done got him. And he turned his head a little bit. He said, yeah, which one? Which one? And he turned and he was telling him, looking at the dude over there. And then he said, yeah, I got you, man. Come on. He said, come on with it, man. I got you. I got you. You talking about the one with the kid and play afro. Okay, I got you. I got you. So, man, Gallet, Deputy Warren Gallant popped the flap. I guess dude pulled it out, whatever. He handed it to him. I'm looking straight at it. It's something black taped up. Look about the size of a pack. So Deputy Warren Gallant said, what about me? You ain't got nothing for me. So dude was like, just give me a minute. Give me a minute. Let me get it out. He was like, all right. Man, Deputy Warren Gallant closed the flap, walked straight into Miss T office and dropped it on the desk. He said, Miss T, that motherfucking knucklehead ass boy over there just gave me these cigarettes talking about some... Give it to the one out here with the little box cut afro. The one that's getting ready to transfer and go to another prison. I say you put a disciplinary report on both of their asses, Miss T. So Miss T jumped up real quick. She said, uh-huh. So she came over there. She said, oh, boy, you got them cigarettes on you like that? And he said, what? I ain't got no cigarette. And Deputy Ward the like, hey, walking up behind the lady. He said, yeah, he do, Miss T. And, and Miss T, guess what? Guess what? And she said, what, Galat? And he was like, Motherfucker got some more on him, too, because he told me he going to give me some for me for passing it for him, that I just had to be patient and let him get it. I don't know where he got it put at, but he told me he had some more for me, Miss T. Miss T got on the radio, called the deputy warden of security. Deputy warden of security came down there with one of the cert team, brought him out, strip searched him, found like three more packs of 
Chris Brown CDs on him. When I say that dude was so mad, bro, when I say he was screaming and cussing and talking shit when certain team was taking him out, he was in handcuffs. And when they were taking him out, Deputy Ward Gallat had moved back some, like, to where I was at, close to the barber chair. And he was, like, leaning on his rail. Like, not the rail. Leaning on the big-ass uh, cart that he be pulling. And dude was like, police head, I'm going to pull your so Police Doing all this, and Deputy Ward Gallet was smiling. He was like, "You don't know who you fucking with, do it. You don't know. You don't know." Then turned and looked at me and said, "Bill, hell, hell, Bill, Bill, hell no, hell no, who he fucking with, do it." Deputy Ward laughing. He think that's funny. Deputy Ward Gallet said, "Miss T, Miss T." She like, "Yeah, Gallet." He said, "Hell no, who he fucking with, do it." She said, "No, nah, hell no, Gallet." But I bet you he gonna learn real soon. And Deputy Ward Gallant started laughing, talking about, yeah, he gonna learn. Yeah, bitch gonna, oh, the bitch gonna learn. Oh, he gonna have to learn. Fuck around that bad house the state prison. Doing our detail, we eventually shoot back to the dorm. At this point, I told y'all I was in the same dorm as Deputy Ward Gallant. We actually was directly next door to each other in the cells. We was right, we was in the rooms right next to each other. I get back in the dorm. You know, I kick it with my guys. I ask them, like, anything happening here today, I always got to figure out what's going on. Uh, Day go by. Just time go by during the day. Next thing you know, knock at my door. I'm like, yo. I'm laying back on the bed smoking a Chris Brown CD. It's good luck. Man, I jumped up so goddamn quick. Put the Chris Brown CD out. Sprayed some little stuff. Well, it ain't no spray. It's like a spray. It's a chain gang spray. You take a sock, make the story real quick. You take a sock, you put about two or three bars of soap in there, you tie a knot in it, and you just beat the sock on the wall. And you beat it on the wall till you break all the soap. Once all the soap is broke up real good, once all the soap is broke up real good, when you just hit it like that, like you take the sock and just do it like that, but you keep it in your grip, you just throw it up, a powder going to come out of it. You know, it's from the soap, and that's like you spraying your room down. I know that's how institutionalized as hell, but that's just how they call it. So I had to spray the room down real quick. Went to the door. I'm like, what's up? He's like, hey, Bill, let me holler at you for a second. Let me holler at you, Bill. So I step out the room. I'm like, what's up? He said, that's a stupid motherfucker, ain't it? These motherfuckers be thinking they got so much sense. And, man, that man glass is so damn thick. It just be looking weird when he looking at you because it's like I can see your eyeball. But that bitch just get expanded. <laughs> that man glass is about this damn thing. So he like, that was a stupid motherfucker, ain't he, Bill? He gonna try to hand me some damn tobacco. Motherfucker, I've been locked up too long to play any type of games like that. Ain't it, Bill? You, you, you think we gonna sit here and play these games like I'm gonna risk my fucking job. Like I'm gonna mess up my job to sit here and pass some damn tobacco for you. You got to be a stupid son of a bitch. And Bill, I see you smart, Bill. Bill, I see you getting smarter and smarter because I I know he had to ask you, Bill, and, and she, you ain't do it. I see you ain't do it. So I said, nah, hell nah, I ain't gonna do it. He said, you getting smarter, Bill. Don't fuck up your job. Don't, don't, don't fuck around and lose your job now. You don't want to mess up your job. I'm really thinking like, man, if you don't get the hell on, bro, I don't care about all that. You know what I'm saying? Yo, ahead, trip. One day, about a week later, they was having what you call Employee Appreciation Day. Employee Appreciation Day. And um, this is the day where the orderlies got to be up there early as hell because there's so much stuff we got to set up, we got to do, we got to get together. And... You know, they need us to have their tables put together. They need us to make sure the food out there, we pulling it off the truck. Everything we got to do. So me and Deputy One Gallant had to be up front around the same time every day for like a whole week. So one of the days, bruh, it's like six, six o'clock in the morning. We both out, you know, signing out at the door. We leave out. We get down there to the end of the gate. Deputy One Gallant say, hey, Bill, Bill, you see him right there? So I'm looking around, I'm like, see who? He was like, look straight ahead, straight ahead at that gate. So I look at the gate, I'm like, yeah, I see somebody. I'm like, I don't know who the hell that is. He said, yeah, that's Perkins. That's Perkins at that gate. I say, Perkins, who the hell is Perkins? He said, that boy that tried to hand me that tobacco 
over there in the over there in the intake dome. Yeah, that's Perkins. And it's so crazy, bro. This man real life refer to you by your last name. Like this man really remembers niggas on a last name basis. <laughs> he remember you on a last name basis. He's not remembering nothing. No nickname, no first name, no nothing. Just like the military. Just like the police for real. I say, hey man, yeah, better be careful. That boy posted up at that gate like that. He said, he don't want to fuck with me, Bill. Nah, that ain't what he want. He don't want to fuck with me. He don't want to fuck with me. He don't know who I am. Yeah, shit. That, that's the worst thing for a nigga to want to do on Valdosta State Prison. Maybe at another prison, you might get away with it. But as long as I'm right here at Valdosta State Prison, oh, shit. Motherfucker don't want to see me. Nigga can't see me. We go through the gate. We get to walking down there. He pulling the car. He think he's slick. He do all that talking, but he was on the right. I was on the left. Dude in the front, but closer to the right. Deputy Ward Gallant going to stop like he tying his shoe, then get back up and pull the cart to the left. So now I'm on the right side and he's on the left. But I didn't say nothing because the issue ain't with me. I ain't said that word. So he eventually, we eventually get closer, closer to the gate. So soon we get up close to like by where dude standing there. He said, puss ass nigga. Old ass, bitch ass, police ass, snitch ass, nigga. Nigga, I'll fuck around and get out of this gate. I'm going to knock your bitch ass out, nigga. So Deputy Well Glock was like, who the fuck you talking to? So he said, I'm talking to you, old police ass, snitch ass, nigga. He said, oh, you don't know who you fucking with. I'll have your ass back down that green mile quicker than you can count the one, two, motherfucking three. So dude said, nigga, how the fuck you going to have me on a green mile? Nigga, you ain't the police, nigga. Now, when they say the Green Mile, that's just the tier program. The tier program is anywhere from nine months to two years where you locked in a room and can't come out. But they call it the Green Mile at Valdosta because it got a, a greenish fence wrapped around the whole tier program. So sometimes people that's at Valdosta just call it the, the Green Mile. Deputy one Gallant started laughing. He said, fuck with me. Fuck with me now. You don't know who you fucking with, but you will learn real quick. You will learn real quick. You will learn real fucking quick. So, dude, like, man, bitch ass nigga. So then the nigga start getting on my case. He saying, bald head, you a bitch ass nigga too. Nigga, we're trying to holler at your pussy ass. You act like you ain't want to talk to a nigga. You ain't want to say nothing, nigga. You a hoe too, nigga. So I ain't say nothing. I just, I just shrugged my shoulders and kept walking because it's like this. But at the end of the day, you hollering through a gate. You know what I'm saying? I'm on my way to my detail. I'm really not paying you no attention. Yeah, you talking crazy, but at the end of the day, if I, like, try to run up on you or anything right now, I'm just burning energy. I can't get to you. You can't get to me. You know what I'm saying? So, at, at this current point, it's just like, if I feed into that goofy shit you saying to me, what am I going to get out of it? Like, what does it, what's the benefit? You know what I'm saying? Next time, you know, we hear keys. So, the gate in front of us, you know, we done passed him, but we still on the same walk. The gate in front of us is locked. We got to wait on the officer. The gate behind us to the right is the one he's standing at. It's an officer walking down from his building like this. We hear a key ring like they're getting ready to open the gate. So Deputy Warren Gallant say, hey, Bill, if that motherfucker come out here running up on me, oh, I'm going to put one on his ass so good. And you know, this man, is tall. he old. This is funny. He's <laughs> Even hearing him say this is just funny as hell. He said, I'm going to put one on his ass so good. Put some lumps on his little motherfucking head. So I'm out there dying laughing. You know what I'm saying? Man, the girl mess around and open the gate and then come out like walking this way, but let him out too. They both come up here walking to the gate. So I turn, I put my back on the gate like this. I'm like this. Like, bro, you even come anywhere near trying to swing on me, play with me, anything. I'm finna try to do it to your ass. So Deputy Warden Gallant, he just let the, the the thing he was pulling, he just let that go and turned and looked at her. So the girl walked up. She said, hey, fellas, how y'all doing? We like, we doing all right, we doing all right. Man, that girl got to unlocking the gate. The little dude that went to swinging on Gallant. We done swung like three times. He done missed every time. Hey, man, Gallant little old fragile bones. He was moving around. He had his hands like this, though. I don't know what the hell he thought he was doing, but. He had his hands like this the whole time, but he was weaving all of it. Man, they think no Deputy One Gallant put two of them on his ass. Boop, boop, when he hit him the second time. You know, Gallant hand pretty big, man. That man hand like this, you know what I'm saying? When he hit him the second time, dude knocked out, fell right on the ground. The girl like, what the fuck? 
So the girl done pulled off her radio, but she ain't even say nothing. And then she called the medical, let them know what was going on. Man, the girl said, help me out, Gallant. Help me out, Gallant. She grabbed the man's pants. Deputy Warren Gallant grabbed his shirt. They picked him up, dropped him on top of the car that the man was pulling, and she led us through the gate. Bro, Deputy Warren Gallant, I promise you, Deputy Warren Gallant knocked this man out, put him on the long metal cart that he be pulling, and we walked straight up to security. When we got up to security, the Deputy Warren and security, two search was standing out there already, because she had already told him it was one medical personnel out there. And, uh, they said, what happened? And he said, motherfucker ran out the dorm and ran up on me, calling me all kind of names and started swinging on me. Dep, hey, Dep, I hit his ass with a two-piece mixed chicken with the butter gravy, and his ass went down. Down, hey, Dep, Deputy Ward, Deputy Ward. Down goes Fraser, Deputy Warden. Everybody bust out laughing. So the Deputy Ward said, hey, Bill. You know, they were calling me by my real name. They said, hey, Bill. I'm like, yes, sir. He like, what happened, man? I say, shit, man, I ain't see too much. I just saw your boy, you know, I just saw Deputy Ward and Gallant right here knock this ass out. So everybody was just laughing. They just thought it was so funny. You know what I'm saying? And they got dude off the cart, made sure he was straight, then took him to medical. And then they were so crazy with it. But I literally be doing my job. I'll be up front doing my job. And one of my detail officers be like, hey, Bill, uh, go to security. Uh, the warden call you or the deputy warden need to see you. So I'll leave. I'll go to security. I'll go in here and I'll be like, what's up, Dep? And I'll walk his office. He'll have about five, six of his friends in there that just work on different parts of the compound. And I'll walk in there and they'll be like, what Gallant did? How Gallant did him? What he did? And then i tell him, like, shit, dude ran up, went swinging on his ass. Gallant was like that. He was weaving it. Then he hit his ass with a two-piece. They just thought it was so funny, bro. And then Deputy Ward Gallant, I'm talking about he just thought he was so, so fire after that. I remember, the, I think the last thing I know, I was going I was going inside the hole once to give something to somebody. And um, Deputy Ward Gallant was walking out, and I heard him arguing with dude because I know dude's voice. And dude said, uh, put that nigga, I'm going to pull your bitch ass out next time. I'm going to pull your bitch ass out next time. And then another dude, I guess he was a blood or something. Then another dude said, yeah, ain't, ain't, ain't no doing my brother like that. Nigga going to air your ass out. <laughs> he definitely was going like, to turn around and say, hey, motherfucker, you don't know who you fucking with, do it. I'd knock your motherfucking ass out. And just like I did your buddy, I'd knock your motherfucking ass out. So thank, thank wisely. Think wisely. They said, nigga, you the police. He said, think wisely. They said, you think that shit cool? You the police? He said, think wisely, motherfucker. And then as I was walking in, he said, Bill, he in there talking shit. That same motherfucker, I put that two-piece mixed chicken with the buttery biscuit on. I said, yeah, that's crazy. Then I went in there. But the nigga had stopped talking shit to me, though. I guess he just... You know, realize, like, that ain't had nothing to do with it, bro. Whatever. But listen, bro, at the end of the day, y'all already know, bro. Just do the right thing. Stop the streets. Don't go to jail. Don't go to prison. It's not worth it, bro. It's your boy, Bill, and I'm out of here.